you guys, welcome to On The Water TV. This week we took a field trip down to New Jersey. Late November, we're fishing Seaside Heights, Island Beach State Park, striped bass along the shore. Shell Karras, who's my guide today, is already out there. So hang with us, we're gonna see if we can't pick up a couple of fish. Late November, 22 degrees out here with a wind chill factor of about 15. It's gonna be great fishing though. I know Shell did some nice fishing yesterday, so hang with us. How fishing has changed today. Going back 25 years ago, these guys would have to run the beach back and forth. Hopefully, run into one of their friends who would tell them, "Hey, we got fish down here on the point." Nowadays, there's a network of these fishermen. So what they'll do is they'll get on the cell phone and they'll tell each other, "Hey, we're on fish." He'll call in a group of people. They'll all come down and they'll start fishing it. That's how things have changed in the day and age of the cell phone. Just trying to find some bird play. Uh, things have been slow this morning, but uh, things could pick up as this tide comes in. And I'm noticing a lot of gannets north of us, but they're out a little far at the moment. After a slow morning, Shell was able to find a few fish in the area. But with the fall run in full swing, the major body of stripers had pushed on to follow the bait. These fish were moving fast, and sometimes you have to make a call to pick up and chase these migrating stripers down the beach. So we just moved. We got a call that some birds are working. Get those guys in the water and they're all hooked up. Here we go. Got a call from somebody that said they had fish up towards Asbury, so we got in the car. And what they'll do down here in New Jersey is they literally just cruise right along the shore. The road's right there, looking for any kind of birds. If you can look over my right side, off to this side, you got birds everywhere. There's just fish stacked up in here. Switched over, I had an SP minnow earlier. Went over to some meadow, picked up a nice little fish. Nice fish, Chris. That's a Jersey striped bass. Guys, if you want to extend your season, come down to the New Jersey shore. Here we are, three days from Thanksgiving. There's tons of fish. Look at the belly on this little fellow. They're all eating very healthy. This is the place you want to be. Uh, you got to move around, communicate with your buddies if you can, and uh, get a handle on where the fish are. Uh, this time of the year, the key to success is finding out where the bait is. And these seagulls are telling us there's sand eels everywhere. They're moving fast, and there's fish pushing them. So these are the, the things you want to look for. Uh, we were down, you know, down south of this earlier today, and it was very little bird play, very stagnant looking water, nothing really moving at all. And now up here, it's another world. There's life everywhere you look, and there's thousands and thousands of birds, and guys are hooking fish to our right and to our left. So there's sand eels around. This happens to be a halco. Uh, it's an Australian lure, number 70. It's called the twisty. Uh, slender design, I put my own bucktails on them. They usually come with just a treble hook. But avas, uh, any kind of soft baits that would imitate them if the fish get close enough. But right now, distance is important. These fish are just like almost at the end of the cast. So this is what uh, uh, the lures we were trying to use. Uh, Hopkins also, but avas and uh, deadly dicks, things like that are the key to success this time of year when they're on sandals. The fish are right there now. I was hoping to pick up one more at the end of this cast, but I may have to make that move myself. Keep moving south. Well, we just picked up our second fish here at this new spot, fishing on uh, Jersey Shore, just about where Asbury Park is. Fish all up and down the coast right now, four days away from Thanksgiving, and they're stacked up, and they'll get them down here right through November, through December, and even into January. Little schoolie action. There's been some bigger fish out here. Right when we got down to this spot, one of the guys had a keeper-sized bass on. Right now, these are little schoolies. 
But you know what though? It's the third week of uh, November. Been in a rod, you got birds working over the shoulder. There's fish all through here, but man, I'll tell you what, they are moving quick. Let's see if I can get back in and can't pick one more up here. Boy, it's, it's like almost like a sprint. You can see just two minutes ago there were 10 anglers in, and now there's just the two of us. These fish are moving that quick. These fish are moving very, very quick. Uh, whatever that bait is, and I believe it's sand eels, it's traveling real quick. I think we've probably come down already a half a mile and these fish are moving. And the biggest body of fish uh, move beyond us right now. You can see all those birds out there. I'm wondering if we don't go here back and get the truck. I, w I think that might be the, the way to do it. And I think right now we should make a move because <laughs> that bird play is really intense down there. When we come back, Shell and I decided to follow the birds and bait heading south at a pretty good clip. Getting phone calls every 15 minutes. These fish are moving 100 miles an hour. Oh, there we go. There he is. That's a Thanksgiving fish right there. It had been just over a year since Hurricane Sandy devastated the Jersey Shore, and signs of the destruction were still visible on every corner. One area that shared in the brunt of the storm was Seaside Heights with its famous casino pier. So what was actually out here? I know that one of the, the most famous shots was the pier, this pier right, right here. Right. It was devastating. I mean, uh, I remember being uh, home that night. We had no power. I'm looking at my iPad, and they showed remnants of the pier, uh, the ride, in the ocean, and tears came down my eyes. Yeah. My kids were out there. Grew up as, right here yeah, on these. You know, we lived down here for since the 70s, and that was the casino pier was a landmark. Everybody walked this boardwalk went on the rides, the stands, ate ice cream and pizza and everything, and to see that in the ocean was devastating to the community. But right now you see they're starting to rebuild, and you can see they're doing work right now here. They're, I know they're replenishing they're the sand. sand. They're making a, a dune here. They're, they're trying to protect the boardwalk and the areas behind it. They're doing this up and down the whole coast. It's important. I know that access was limited mm -hmm. because of the uh, looting that was occurring Correct. that way. First, when could they return for just, you know, hey, let me find out what's going on with my house, my property, and then, yeah, and then how about when the fishermen could actually return and get back out on the beach? For the end of November, we were allowed up towards Seabright. They opened up a few areas like Monmouth Beach. This area here was off limits. Belmar down, there was no access at all. And for how Island long? Beach, no access, right through the whole winter. Wow. You had no power. Right. Uh, they were trying to secure the area. You had uh, you know, gas problems. There was a fire up in the brick area. They lost about 30 or 40 homes. If it wasn't bad enough that this area got clouded by Sandy, it was several months later, they had a serious fire on this boardwalk that we're standing on now. The more southern zone of the uh, reconstruction of everything was all done, and then right after Labor Day, they had a fire that I think it was like three blocks uh, were Burned destroyed. this thing up. But you know, they're gonna rebuild it again. One of the things that we heard was that, oh, the, everything's changed as far as the fishing. There's so much in the water, there's, there's debris everywhere. You can't do this, can't tell. That was the early rumors, but we didn't have that problem. Hurricane Sandy, it broke a lot of homes. It broke a lot of buildings and a lot of property physically, but it didn't seem to break the spirit of the yeah. folks down here. Absolutely. People pulled together. You know, when the governor came down, you know, and everybody's here in Jersey strong, and it's, yeah. and it's true. We're a great state. We have a lot to offer. People come from all over uh, to visit the Jersey Shore. We did have a, you know, a fair amount of fish up north to uh, get a spring run with big adult bunker, but some of these areas we couldn't you know, still go to. Just couldn't access. We, we had access, en enough to you know, make it worthwhile. Rebuilding, it's gonna take another year or so to really get back to 100%, but we're on our way and uh, I think we're making good progress. One of the things that I really noticed and I thought was cool was uh, when, when we grabbed a quick bite there at uh, Betty and Nick's, the tackle shop, Tammy and Beth were kind of telling me the story of when they had such destruction, but they didn't wait. The insurance and all that, they right. went to work and she was telling me about how some of the contractors sure. just volunteered their time they to get a, in They had a lot, there. a lot of help, they did. Uh, people donated uh, flooring and I think the sheetrock was the donated. The sheetrock was donated. Yeah. A lot of guys you know, donated their time. And a lot was, of uh, It was important to help people get on their feet. You know, it makes, makes you feel good. At the end of our visit to the newly reconstructed boardwalk, Shell received a call about fish on the move. I was happy to see that amidst all the destruction wrought by Sandy, 
The storm had brought the Jersey Shore and its surf casting community tighter together. And I was happy to see that the anglers here could still share and enjoy a healthy fishery. Probably take a ride up. Getting phone calls every 15 minutes. These fish are moving 100 miles an hour. Right now we're in Long Branch, but we're making our way to uh, Deal. And uh, just got a report that the guys are down here catching some fish, so this is what we're gonna plan on doing. We just got a call at the fisher at the hole in the wall. This is what they call the hole in the wall. Okay, with metal? I'm gonna go with metal, yes. I always do good on that jetty there. I never really fished this one. I always do that one below that. I feel like I'm trying to cast from a perch. I had that fish on, that first cast in that hole there. I Snapped broke that, it off. yeah. I couldn't believe it. The fly just, I set up, I'm fighting, and all of a sudden the line broke. I go, you gotta be kidding me. Here we go. They want that chartreuse. They like that little chartreuse. That little chartreuse. Well, we just made a move further down. We fish all over, I tied into one. If you want to extend your season, one of the things you gotta do is get down the Jersey Shore. I highly recommend Shore Catch Service, Shore Carers. We had a great day. See, here we go. She just popped on the surface. It's not real big. You can look around. There's all sorts of structure down here. There's really nice sandy beaches, which we've been kind of catching fish on. Shell and I just came up and kind of ambushed these fish. And these rocks are slippery than a skating rink. I have my corkers, but I don't have my stud. So this is not optimal. Oh, there he is. There you go. Shell's on the board. I'm gonna go ahead and let... Nice fish, Shell. Not as nice as the one you just got. I let you catch that bigger one. He did. Pointing that I was one gonna out cast for me. exactly where you threw it. And then he said, no, you no, know, you're the gas, Chris. See, we can't pull one more out of here. It's a nice little schoolie. And I went to that chartreuse tail on our old traditional Hopkins. Little white and chartreuse bucktail on it. Look at the gut on that thing. Feel. Fish are totally full. Chock full. First cast with the chartreuse. First cast with the chartreuse. chartreuse. the north of us, they're in tight right there, Shell. Yeah, I see that. Hey guys, welcome back. We made a little bit of move there while you guys were gone. We're on a nice little jetty here. A little slick, but we got birds working off just at the very, very end of our cast. We're picking up fish. Seems like if we don't get them in that first 20, 25 yards, we don't get them. Shell had a nice fish here a minute ago. Shell, now how far were these fish? Will these be down at State Beach now tomorrow? The way they're moving, I, I would say you, you never know, because I mean, they can move, you know. Yeah, right, exactly. But they're uh, moving south. The they're way moving they're moving, if this, right they're going to follow the bait. This bait is, is you know, on a migratory pattern at the moment. And uh, as fast as they're moving, uh, yeah, they could be, you know, at least down by Point Pleasant, Manilok and Bayhead area. You got stuff right to your right there, tight. Yeah, I see it. Just saw one within casting distance. Get out there. Oh, that's pretty close. So one of the things I'm doing, there we go. Oh, he let go. One of the things we're doing, I'm trying to stand on these little muscles, these little muscle beds, acting as a set of cleats for me. The green slime, if you step on that, I'm dead. But the, the muscles, that's been helping. I had two wax on the, both the, the last two casts. No closing though. That's out there in the shipping lane. <laughs> Letting this one sink a little bit, see if we can't pick something up below. Yeah. 
Michelle, how long will this bite go for? Right now, uh, weather's going to dictate how long the season lasts. Yeah. It's been unseasonably cold for this time of the year. Yeah. But if we get a warming trend, uh, it could go right into the end of December. Wow. You know, we've had seasons where it's not uncommon. December sometimes is the best month of the fall. Now you ever get them in here in it's January? Uh, we caught them in January uh, two seasons ago. And uh, that same year, they caught them right into February. The guys up in this Monmouth County area were catching them all, all winter long. So that's the difference between you guys and us. We're lucky if we can get them into, you know, the 10th of November. These guys are down here catching them all the way into January. Some of the gear I have today, Van Star, I love their stuff. In case it gets wet, closed drag system, I don't have to worry. I got the Van Star 250. I got 11 foot G Loomis IMX, medium heavy. Probably a little heavier than I, I would want for some of these fish, but uh, what it's helping me do is launch some casts. And most of these fish you're picking up at the very end of your cast, so. Oh, there we go, there he is. I'm coming to you. <laughs> Well, Shell, we moved down about a mile and all of a sudden we're into him. This guy seems like a little bit better fish than that last one. That looks like a good one. You gotta skate him in over the rocks. No, that's a good fish right there. Good job, Chris. Oh, beautiful. You got him, foul hooked. Foul hooked on the bigger fish. I'm gonna walk him right in between here. Nice job. Look at that fish. Look how fat that fish is. Total sand eels. These things are just eating. Talk about the feedback. It's a nice fish, huh? Beautiful fish. Look at the gut on that thing. Look at this thing. Beautiful. <laughs> That's a Thanksgiving fish right there. Got a beautiful fish. That was a great call. Shell just said, let's move up further. See if we can't crowd JM and those guys. Fish in the Jersey Shore. Shell Karras. Short catch guide service, Chris Megan on the water. Let's get him back in. See if this guy will make it out. All right, buddy, you got to turn. He's swimming good. Out, there he goes. There he goes. Gone. All right. To bite another day. We started early this morning at first light. We were all the way down to State Beach. Beautiful, beautiful morning, but we didn't do a whole lot down there. Shaw got a call that they were fish breaking on the surface, birds all over them further up. Here we go. They want my green chartreuse tail. <laughs> it's the only one in the bag. It's short catch guide service with the proper lure selection. That's exactly it. Shelly put me on a lure. It's about my sixth or seventh fish. In here. That's a good man when you know he gives you the right lure. My mother taught me well. Very well. I've known Shelly a few years now. Seen all the shows. Two gentlemen. Oh, they, oh, there you go, buddy. Easy, easy. Another little schoolie. Nice fish. Try to be as gentle as possible. The problem here is with no cleats on, if I step too far, I'm in the water. So these fish are really, really healthy. I got a nice paw, pool of water right in here. It's about four feet deep. I can go ahead and release this fish. Get back at it. I'll tell you one of the things you want to do, make sure you do this. After three, four, five fish, make sure you check your leader. Because sometimes these fish, especially when you're coming in over a rock, it'll fray it. This, this has been doing very, very well for me, this lure. So what I want to do is make sure that that leader all the way up is fine. Last thing I want to do is lose a fish because I break it off because I haven't changed out my leader. Looks pretty good. I'm going to get back at it. And 
But what we're waiting on is the, the fish to push the bait right up close to us. Shelly says that you can catch these fish all the way into January, depending on the, the temperature. We did get real cold last night, about 17 degrees. Boy, this is my favorite time of day to fish right here. This last light, it's beautiful. If you go, oh, there we go, right there. I can get a good set on him. There he is. Yeah, oh, they're coming in now, Shell. Look at the birds here to the left. Well, I just picked up another little fish in here. See if I can float him up here. Little schoolie, easy fella. Not a whole lot left. Beautiful fish. Thanksgiving in a couple days. Down along the Jersey Shore. Extend your season. Take a ride, it's well worth it. I'm fishing with Shell Karras from the uh, Shore Catch Guide Service. Great guy, great group. Check him out online. I want to get this guy back in the water. He's real healthy. Boy, we started out this morning around 4.30. Went down, had a nice breakfast at the tackle shop. We got hit at our first light down at State Beach in Seaside Heights. Didn't do a whole lot down that way, but we got a call that the fish were breaking. Further up, we made a run towards Asbury Park, just north of that. We're picking up some nice fish here. New Jersey's sprawling beaches provide an amazing opportunity for anglers to extend their striper fishing season into the fall. It was a pleasure to meet up with Shell and the Short Catch Guide Service to learn more about the fantastic surf casting that New Jersey beaches offer. Chasing migrating striped bass down the beach is exhilarating, and if you can keep up, the fishing can be fast and furious. It looks like it moved out a little bit. Yeah, they did. Hey, Shell, thanks for having me down here. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for being a great host, it's giving me the vessel over in the bag. I think I hooked up uh, six or seven nice fish in this one spot alone. It's the chartreuse tail. That's it. And uh, you only had the one in there. Only huh? one in my bag, but uh, my mother taught me well. Share, she sure did. share it with others. Guys, if you'd like to learn more about today's show, log on to onthewater.com. Looks like JM hooked up again with whatever he's fishing. The entire crew at OTW and Short Catch Guide Service. We just hope to see you on the water. All right, here's my question, not fishing you later, but who's the guy that assigns the nicknames, like Johnny Cakes and Small Sal, Big Sal? The nicknames are intended to be as embarrassing as possible. <laughs> You're not supposed to embrace them. You fight, it just gets worse. It gets worse. Yeah. <laughs>